Cancer is a leading cause of death worldwide. According to the World Health Organization, the disease accounted for 7.9 million deaths, about 13% of all deaths worldwide in 2009, and that more than 70% of all cancer deaths occur in low and middle income countries. Those figures frighten you straight away. And I thought we saw this here this morning, the graph that by the year 2035, the majority of deaths from cancer will come from Africa. This morning, I don't want to, to, to dwell on talking about those dreadful statistics, which we, we, we know, uh, either to scare you or to remind you of them. I think it's something that we saw this morning and we are familiar with. Nor do I want simply to paint a gloomy picture of the current inadequacy of the facilities for cancer diagnosis, treatment, and care in Africa, and particularly in Kenya. Yes, we have inadequate facilities, that's for sure. Yes, we have inadequate human resources, specialists deal with culture, that's for sure. But let us also acknowledge the fact that the journey has started to deal honestly with the cancer menace in our continent. We are going to call upon you to travel with us along this journey because we cannot do it alone. I think this is where the AIDA partnership comes. It is a long journey, it's a difficult journey, we have started it, but in order to complete this journey, as somebody said this morning, that if you want to go fast, go alone. But if you are to complete the journey, go with somebody. Ten years ago, the picture was more gloomy in Kenya regarding cancer diagnosis, treatment in Kenya. Today, it is much better. And those uh, 10 years we have traveled shows that partnership and collaboration work. Collaboration not between and among governments, I think that is important. Collaboration between and among individuals and institutions. And in the case of Moi Teaching and Referral Hospital, where we started a cancer center in 2007, working with Indiana University and Oxford University and Duke University, the result of that journey and that collaboration can now be seen that a university that didn't have a cancer center 10 years ago is perhaps now becoming one of the leading cancer centers in Kenya in a period of 10 years. But let me call and talk about this collaboration from a very personal experience, or partnership for that matter. In our, day, in our daily lives, we always take it for granted that we are fine. In fact, when we hear of any tragedy, we rarely feel that it may have hit us at a personal level. The plane is always crashing somewhere in Europe, in West Africa, or in the Himalayas, very far away from where we live be it in Kenya, Kentucky, or in New Mexico. Some kid is born without a leg in Peru. That obviously does not concern us, so we think. A goat is eaten by a cow in Papua New Guinea. An exotic story indeed can only happen in the tropics. <laughs> the same story is with cancer. We really think that the victim can be us, perhaps, it may be a poor fellow somewhere in Zacatecas, but not us. Sometime in July 2010, I got the news that I had prostate cancer after biopsy done at MP Shah Hospital in Nairobi. It was not easy to take this shocking news, but my wife Dorothy was sitting there in the audience. The family and the doctors helped me face the reality and it encouraged me to have hope and not to fall into hopeless dis dis despair. That was a great relief. The next step was to seek prompt and effective treatment under qualified and professional hands. My wife and I read a lot through the internet, getting to know what types of treatment there were available somewhere in the world or in Kenya. I had always known, as a then Minister for Medical Services, that our health delivery system was extremely wanting and underdeveloped when it came to cancer diagnosis, treatment, and care. Indeed, the only facility we had in the country was at Kenyatta National Hospital, the National Referral Hospital, where an old cobalt radiation machine existed. 
with equally overworked and under-trained oncology staff managing it. Those needing, needing radiation could queue for a year. Some would perish on the land while waiting to be treated. And the only other facility then that had cancer, for, cancer uh, equipment worth talking about was MP Shah Hospital, which was actually established while I was still Minister for Medical Services. In the Ministry of Medical Services, where I was a minister, I found there were not even cancer guidelines. Under the Kenyatta National Hospital, the National Cancer Register was wanting. As a Minister for Medical Services, I'd asked my staff to give me data on how many Kenyans sought healthcare abroad and how much the country spent. I was told that annually, we spent about one billion shillings ceasing treat treatment abroad, and that was equivalent to $10 million a year. I felt very guilty and immediately I presented a cabinet paper seeking to establish a specialized cancer center in Nairobi so that our people could get treatment locally and that center could train specialists and professionals and could welcome partners from abroad so that we could get cancer treatment locally. The cabinet paper did not see daylight because my colleagues argued that it was more important to establish dispensaries and health centers and not a high level institution like that, which apparently could cost too much money. That was the argument then in 2008. It changed over time as reality dawned upon us that we could chew gum and walk at the same time. <laughs> Build health centers and dispensaries and also have highly specialized institutions. Now, it's that kind of situation that I found myself in now in 2010, when in July when I was diagnosed with cancer. I could not be convinced that I could go to get treatment in my own country, notwithstanding the fact that I was a minister for medical services. I contacted friends abroad, particularly in the US. A doctor friend of mine in Minneapolis, Minnesota, asked me to send him my lab tests, and when he saw the test and the results, and the PSA, which was 34, he immediately called me and told me, asked me, when are you coming from the US next? I said, in three months' time. The next question was, as, what treatment are you currently getting? I said, I was under hormone treatment. They said, okay, you can spend three months and come to the US. To cut a long story short, I ended up being treated at the Helen Diller Comprehensive Cancer Care Center, University of San Francisco, University of California, San Francisco, under the care of Professor Mark Roach III and his team. Professor Roach is a well-known uh, 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 oncology, radio, what do you call it? <laughs> Radiation oncology, something like that. But that was me. What about the rest of Kenyans? Where can they go for treatment? I think this is where the, the beef is really. Yes, when it is you and you are capable of doing so, you can treat, treat treatment abroad. But those, that graph you are seeing there, where are these people going to get treatment? Is it possible, therefore, that with collaboration, Mel, that we can get the Harvards of this world help us set up these institutions in Africa. And for the specialists to come over there rather than patients come here, it may be easier and less costly. And I think African government should be able to bear the costs because it must be born. So this is the question my wife and I asked after this experience. What is it possible that there were many more people who did not know their, their, their health status? What did it take to get to know that you needed cancer treatment? I don't want to get into the details of how uh, I realized this lab test could have come earlier. So we set up the Africa Cancer Foundation, which my wife is going to talk about tomorrow, with the aim of making people aware 
that regular medical tests, especially if you're a man over 45, the test alone and knowing your health status earlier would save you your life. As we were taught in primary school or nursery school, a stitch in time saves nine. A stitch in time saves nine. When I learned that, I didn't know what a stitch was, but it meant something that if you do something early. The Africa Cancer Foundation, when we established it in July 2011, its main aim was to mobilize knowledge and support for cancer diagnosis, treatment, and care, and to help the afflicted get treatment, either locally or abroad. When we launched it, we had about 11 cancer warriors, people who had survived. As I speak now, only six of them are alive. That means 50% are gone, so that graph is probably true. One of them, and this is where I want to elaborate this issue of collaboration and institution building across countries, one of them was a little girl called Alexandra Ajoy, who was suffering from leukemia. Lexi had a mother who was a doctor. In September 2010, Lexi fell sick at home and was rushed to Nairobi Hostel, one of the leading hospitals in the East African region. She was diagnosed with leukemia. 99% of her bone marrow had been taken over, and she had an HB of only three. She could not be treated in Nairobi, so her mother, being a doctor, took her to India, where she found that she couldn't get treatment from, um, from Nairobi. She went to India for treatment. And in India, she was told that she needed a bone marrow transplant. A test was done with her brother, and her brother and her could not match it. It was a relief when Margaret found a matching sample in, in New York blood bank, but this needed to, pay, to be purchased at four million Kenyan shillings, that's $40,000, and then be transferred to India for treatment of the little girl. Fortunately, Margaret came to me as a minister for medical services and arranged some, some of the money to be paid by the National Health Insurance Fund, and the money was taken to New York, the stem cell was shipped to India, and the little girl saved, was saved for some time. When she came back to Nairobi, she relapsed, taken to Nairobi Hospital for treatment, and she passed on. Now, if the blood bank in New York had not been there, and if money had not been there, Maybe Alexis' life would have ended much earlier. What is the moral of the story? The moral of the story is that we need to think of these mechanisms of collaborating across the, across the oceans and proper institutions and professionals that can help save lives. That is the bottom line. If we are talking about collaboration, those are the issues to be handled, nothing theoretical. I can give you one last example which is extremely painful. This was my friend Jerry Okungu, who was a journalist, who discovered rather too late, uh, because diagnosis was done late, that his PSA was 817. The Kenyan doctor did his best. He too came to the US to a hospital in Atlanta, Georgia. His life was prolonged for some time, but finally, Jerry is one of those people who passed on. Jerry made a testimony, which is very interesting. He says, I would strongly advise my friends and family members to avoid the mistake I made. And what was, were these mistakes? One, to assume that a healthy diet by itself can protect one from getting cancer. Two, not to have regular medical checkup for prostate cancer as a man, as a man once you are over 40. Jerry then said, among other things, that he discovered once in Atlanta and that there are very advanced facilities that save many people's lives, but these facilities are not in our country. The moral of the story, said Jerry, 
is that we should strive as much as possible to build these facilities in collaboration with our brothers and sisters across the oceans. And that one of these days, like I proved to you in the case of this university in Eldred, it can be done. Currently, I have come here with the, my CEO of the leading hospital in our county, in Kisumu, called Yaromogi Ogingo Tingringa Teaching at Ritual Hospital. Dr. Peter Koth is over there, and he has prepared. <laughs> and he must, his team have prepared a project proposal to establish West Kenya Comprehensive Cancer Care Center, and the first project of West Kenya Comprehensive Cancer Care Center is the Kisumu Radiotherapy Center, which we have discussed very well, and we are here, among other things, to get collaboration with people in this audience so that Kenya can do much better in cancer treatment, diagnosis, and care than when I started when I was Minister for Medical Services. But things are much better now. The journey is long. We must travel it together. Thank you. Thank you very much.